Today I bring you 20, yes, 20 unique sound design tricks. These tricks are very diverse and not so common, so you will definitely find useful ideas. Number 1. Making paths more interesting. Path sounds are great, but sometimes a path can be too generic. So let's make it more interesting. One quick way to do it is by adding a second oscillator and then using a web table to add textures. Not only that, synths like Vital let you offset the LFO on stereo. But if you don't want to use wavetable synthesis, you can use a resonant filter. For instance, here I have the same path, but I also have a second oscillator going through the second filter, and this time the filter has a lot of resonance, almost self-oscillating. Then I'm modulating it with the LFO. I like to call this like little comets. Just my recommendation, try to keep the level of the second filter a little bit lower. Again, to add even more variety, we, we can make this movement stereo. Or maybe we don't use the LFO and we use the random. Number two is how to make stereo basses. Usually when people say that basses has to be in mono, they refer to the sub-frequencies. And that's because on many music genres, you want to keep the sub stable. And when the sub is stereo, you most likely will have phase issues that will make it go up and down on volume. So there are a couple of ways you can fix this. So the first one is present in many synthesizers that let you edit your wave tables. The only thing you have to do is to take the soft wave or any other wave and get rid of the fundamental. Then you add back the sub as a second oscillator and a sine wave. And as you can see now, we don't have side information on the sub and the sub is stable. And what's also great about these modern synthesizers is that you can route the second oscillator directly to the output. So then you can put stereo effects like a reverb, delay, even some phaser if you want. On the other hand, if your synthesizer doesn't have those options, what you can do is to actually have your stereo sound and then use a high pass filter to get rid of the fundamental. Then you layer that with another synthesizer and now you can add the sub oscillator. Number 3. Sub-saturation. Following the last tip, now we have a clean sub, and that can make the sound sound duller. So to add more character to this bass, we can saturate the sub-frequencies. You can hear it's a little bit more aggressive and has more presence now, which of course is going to make it sound nicer. Number 4. Some delay tricks. Delay is an essential effect, but sometimes we just use it as mono or as ping pong. But if you want something stereo without using ping pong, you can actually offset the timing of one side. That means making it happen before or a little bit after. And yes, this is the same principle as the has effect. This is why some delays will have an offset knob. Now you can also set different timing to each side, that will give you even some rhythmic results. One final thing is really nice to add effects on the wet signal. Number 5. Everything can be plucked here. One of my favorite things to do to add variation to a song, to a loop, is to take an element and then convert it into a series of plucks. For instance, I have this arpeggio right here. What you can easily do is to add some sort of modulation or automation that affects directly the output of your track. Of course, the shape for that has to be something pluckier. You can play with the tension of the shape and with changes on the rate. The 
and as I said, you can use it to add different vibes to your song, as for instance, I did with the bridge of this song. Number 6, Syncing Modulation with Arpeggios Again, I have a simple arpeggio To make it a lot more interesting is to actually add modulation to different parts and keep them in time with the arpeggio This works wonderfully, especially with random sources Of course, you can mix it with other kind of sounds to get even more interesting results Mix it with nice effects and you will have something really interesting. Number 7 is all about making weird rhythms with your arpeggios. You just have to change the amount of notes you are playing whenever you change a chord. That will give you the sense of having a weird rhythm that's going to be on time with your DW and you can always go back to the start. Number 8 is going beyond FM. You might know that the DX7 is one of the most characteristic synthesizers that apply FM, and you may also know that the sounds that it makes are like this. But with modern FM, you can really go crazy and get kind of sounds that other type of synthesis won't give you. This is actually a nice texture, you can then make samples with that and resynthesis. Number 9. Go to the extreme. Usually when you think about choruses, you will think about something like this. But we can go extremer with the knobs and you will realize how deep these effects are. Spiral is a synth that invites you to do it. For instance, a simple phaser can transform into something like this. Or even more crazy is the flanger. Number 10, better than auto panning. For instance, if you have an arpeggio and you want to make it move from left to right in an interesting manner, auto panning is not enough. So what I like to do is actually separate the left and the right and then on each side apply a bandpass filter, it can be any kind of filter, but with a randomizer on the cutoff point. For me at least sound more interesting than auto panning. Number 11. Only affects sound design. Use just one simple sound as a soft wave and then dedicate your entire sound design session on transforming that using only effects. <laughs> This is also fun to do if you have a multi-effect like Snap Hip, Infiltrator or whichever you want. Just remember to use your effects on unconventional ways. Number 12 is the beauty of downsampling. Okay, this one is to learn about a specific effect, but I think beat crushers are really underused. Especially if you think about downsamplers. They won't only decimate your sound, but also will add really nice textures and even some high resonances that can make some sounds be richer. You start hearing some high resonances, the sound seems brighter, even more metallic. You can automate it so you can start destroying the sound a little bit, make it more crunchy, whatever you want.
Number 13. Extreme Compression. If you find that the snare is too snappy and too thin, you may consider changing it, but I'm more stubborn and I just want to make that snare sound good. For that, I'm going to compress the hell out of it. So don't be afraid of experimenting like that and every time you don't like it so much, just use it as parallel processing. Number 14. Rhythmic LFOs. These are really M6, but making them repeat over time makes them something like an LFO. The idea is to produce something that will generate a rhythm. That's why many synthesizers with M6 will let you use these type of pencils. This is excellent to make any synth sound become rhythmic, without having to program a sequence or without having to use an arpeggiator. Number 15. Polyrhythmic LFOs. Now, following that last tip is how to use m to make polyrhythms. The idea is that you put the grid on whatever value you want, then we use the saw pencil on every step, and let's say we modulate the level of oscillator 1. Then we choose another number, for instance 7, and do the same. Now we modulate the level of oscillator 2. Then we have a 5 against 7 polyrhythm. Depending on what you're modulating or how many oscillators you have, you can have more complex types of polyrhythms. Number 16. A healthy amount of limiting. When making weird experiments on sound design, always use a limiter. For instance, if I'm modulating bands on a mini Q, when these two bands clash, we will have a really nasty resonance. Number 17. Any sound is a wavetable. Any wave file can be used as a wavetable. And nowadays, most of wavetable synthesizers will let you drag and drop. So for instance, here we have a kick. We just drag it and drop it, and we have a wavetable. Depending on the sound you use, you will have more useful or less useful sounds, but you can always edit the length of your wavetable depending on the synthesizer that you're using. Number 18. Granular Percussions. This next tip is all about using granular effects to make percussive elements. For instance, I have these drums right here. So let's load up a granular effect and start playing around until we are happy with the result. If you ask me, I love that result and I do this almost all the time when I want those nice percussive textures on the background. Number 19, if you don't have it, just recreate it. For instance, since Transit by Baby Audio and Andrew Hung was released not so long ago, let's try to recreate that. What we need to do is to add different effects, for example, a delay, an OTT, stereo rotary and a flanger. And then with just one macro, start modulating different stuff. So with the macro, I'm modulating the mix knob of the delay, the amount of the OTT, almost everything on the rotary, and the time feedback and mix of the flanger. I believe we did a pretty decent job. Number 20, understanding energy. For me, the most basic example is with the difference between a riser or a downlift. A riser works because it leads you into something more exciting, going from low energy to high energy. And the simplest riser you can make is just white noise and a bandpass filter. This is because higher frequencies give you more energy. The same goes for something as pitch. If we want to make this riser and add an oscillator, we can do it like this. The downlifter is the same, but the other way around. And of course, to make it more interesting, let's add a lot of effects. Then you can add more movement, as for instance a fast LFO on the bandpass filter. 
add more voices to the oscillator and whatnot to make it more exciting. Even we can add another oscillator. And we can experiment and make one oscillator go down in pitch. We can start with mono voices and then start adding more unison and detuning to open up the stereo image. Then you can add other shapes of filters. And from there you can go as crazy as you want. Just remember, high frequencies can give you more excitement, lower frequencies is going to make things duller and darker, but the idea is that you always find a balance. So I hope you find these tricks interesting and you start applying them. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and I hope you have fun with everything I show you today. I will see you next time and bye bye.